For a case of pharyngitis or sore throat, using our mnemonic old carts, we know at the onset or when did it start. For duration, we want to know is a sore throat occurring constantly throughout the day or only intermittent with certain activities such as after a class or a voice recording. If it is intermittent, we like to note the frequency. How many times is it occurring per day or per week? And next we can note the progression. Does a sore throat appear to be occurring more frequently or getting more severe? To help characterize, we could ask for some descriptors. For example, is it scratchy or does it burn? And since this is a poem case, we can ask now or later in our view of symptoms of any upper or lower respiratory tract signs, such as a cough or shortness of breath, aggravating and alleviating factors, and treatments tried. For all cases, we should order a CBC, serum electrolytes, and a respiratory viral panel. In viral pharyngitis, our supporting points will include a sore throat, rhinorrhea, a cough, and for both of those, since it is a bodily fluid, we'll use our mnemonic A, B, and C to write down for our patient note the amount, if there's any blood, and the color, sinus pressure, a fever, and a history of sick contacts. In bacterial pharyngitis, we could also see the sore throat and what will help us differentiate a bacterial from a viral pharyngitis are the centaur criteria, which include tonsillar exudates, tender lymphadenopathy, an absent cough, and a fever. We'll also see a history of sick contacts, and we'll add to our workup a rapid strep test and throat culture. In an acute HIV infection, we'll see a sore throat with fatigue, tender lymphadenopathy, and myalgias. We could also see a fever and a history of sexual contacts. We'll add an HIV antibody, viral load, and CD4 count. In infectious mononucleosis caused by the Epstein-Barr virus, we'll see sore throat, fatigue, tender lymphadenopathy, and now left upper quadrant abdominal pain, fever, and a history of sexual contacts or the exchange of saliva, such as through kissing, and will include an EBV antibody and a monospot test. And finally, in cytomegalovirus, we'll see a sore throat, fatigue, tender lymphadenopathy, left upper quadrant abdominal pain, fever, and a history of being immunocompromised, and will include a CMV antibody. We'll start the poem exam with hand sanitizer, and we want to ask our SP if we have our permission to examine you. Okay, after he said yes, we'll start with the hint exam. For the eyes, we're primarily concerned for conjunctivitis, for URI, so we'll ask the patient to look up. So we verbalize there's no conjunctivitis, no parlor, ask him to look down and verbalize no scleral icterus, no conjunctivitis as well. And then we could also quickly assess the nose to see if there's any rhinorrhea, if he has any runny nose or, con or congestion, and, you know, we don't see... And then we could go ahead and look into his oral pharynx. So we could do that with a tongue depressor. And we want to uh, use very light pressure for these SPs. We don't want to uh, cause them any pain. So ask them to stick out their tongue and say, ah. And we'll look around and say that there's no visible lesions. Uh, the oral pharynx is just clear of exudate. On to lymphadenopathy. So we're going to go ahead and inspect his cervical lymphadenopathy. So we'll start over here. Next, we're going to go ahead and do submandibular, submental. Okay, we're going to do preauricular and postauricular. Do occipital. I want to do supraclavicular. So please shrug your shoulders. Okay, good. Okay, so we had no lymphadenopathy. We'll go ahead and look at his fingernails, and you don't see any cyanosis. We could press on his fingers, and we don't see any delayed cap refill. For the palm exam, the best way to do this is to drop down the gown halfway and ask the patient to please uh, sit cross, cross your arms here, and this will hold the gown and keep them uh, protected. So the first thing we want to do is uh, verbalize that there's no visible lesions to the anterior chest, to the posterior chest. Next, we'll palpate. So we'll palpate his chest and just ask him if you have any tenderness there or pain. Tenderness or pain. Do the same thing on the back. We could percuss. So we're going to go left to right. Three spots. Listen to his uh, lung fields. We'll use the bell of the stethoscope for his blood the clavicle. So we'll instruct you on instruct them every time you feel the stethoscope. Please take a breath in and out. Okay, that was a good equal breath. Okay, 
So now we can make a comment that we heard clearer breath sounds, uh, no audible wheezing. We want to use economy of movement to make use of the time and listen to his heart sounds. So the mnemonic we're going to use is apartment M225A. So we'll start off with his aortic in the second intercostal space on the right. Go ahead to this pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral. And if this was a female patient, you could ask them to please lift up your left breast. comment that we heard an audible S1, S2, no audible S3s or S4s or murmurs, rubs and gallops. This was a case where we were concerned about mono in a poem case. This would be a good time to do the abdominal exam because we finished his, his upper chest. We could lie them down. So is it okay if I lie you down? Is it okay, okay, good. You ask them their permission. You don't want to forget to extend the, uh, the leg rest. Start the same way. We'll verbalize that we don't see any visible lesions, and we'll go ahead and progress to auscultation. So for the abdominal exam, we want to auscultate first in four quadrants. Okay, now we could verbalize that we heard uh, normal active bowel sounds, and then we'll go ahead and percuss in the four quadrants. And uh, we want to ask them if they have any pain first. You want to avoid those areas. So do you have any pain anywhere? No. Okay, so we'll start in the lower quadrant here, and we'll do superficial first just with one hand. We could make good eye contact with the, with the SP to see if they have any, any pain or if they wince. Not painful at all? Okay, now we'll do, go ahead and do deep, and for that we could just single. We're going to put one hand on top of the other. Any pain at all? Okay, so no pain. And then to conclude, if we were concerned about mono, we want to check hepatomegaly or splenomegaly. So we want to place our hand under his his liver. And you can instruct them to please take a deep breath in. And now, as he breathes out, you don't want to feel anything, any liver border below the the rib cage. So once you feel the rib cage, and no nothing extending further, you can make the comment that there's no hepatomegaly, and you could do the same thing on the swing side. So you could please take a deep breath in, okay, and now breathe out, and then you can feel the lower border of the left rib cage and no organ extending below it. Okay, so now you can cover them up again, and then you want to help them sit up, and then just ask them if they have any questions, and then that will conclude the exam.